everybody, and welcome to a new year, and also episode number 50. My name is Tony, and I'm here to, well, have a good time, like always, talking music, having chats, and seeing what's what about music, and everything about that, and live, and this and that, and I'm just saying a bunch of words right now to add up to a uh, meaning that I'm just glad um, to get started on this new year. I know it's been a couple it's been about been about 10 days since I spoke to you last. We've had to recharge the batteries because we've got a big, huge year coming up. Lots and lots and lots of fun stuff planned, different stuff planned. Um, different than the first 50 episodes, we plan to look at things a little bit differently. We plan to have a lot of guests. We plan to just have a good old time sharing what we love and sharing what we like to do, which is talking music. But tonight, tonight's got a lot, a lot, a lot of special little things uh, lined up here and there, but uh, let's get started. Um, I hope everyone out there had a great New Year's Eve. If you happen to go out or happen to stay at home, I'm sure you were spinning some really, really good music like I was myself. Um, when you're putting together a list or you're at a party or you're just entertaining um, one or two people, you know, the main goal is, is just to feel good no matter what kind of music you listen to. Um, here at the Hookup on Music podcast, we seem to like a lot of music. Um, please, 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 please don't don't uh, dislike us for us for it. We like metal just as much as we like funk. You know, we also like reggae and we also like punk. You know, we like a little bit of everything. You know, we like a little bit of R&B. You know, we like to get classic. Maybe we like some music from the 1930s. Um, going forward, um, any kind of music that you enjoy, you can know that this is a great place for you to come and be able to just continue to hear, you know, music and good stuff and things that you enjoy. And well, we're going to open up the door a little bit and let you also join in and talk with us about things that you enjoy. So please, 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 please always reach out and, and please not only to myself, but to, uh, anywhere else that you see we're at please please spread the word because we do enjoy love talking music that's really what this is all about um some of us have lost people in our life and well a good way to remember those people or just remember good times is to share through music and that's something that i've learned from a long time ago so you know thank you thank you again i'm just gonna spend this whole episode saying thank you thank you very much for for joining me um but let's get started, okay? What are you listening to, or what have you been listening to, or what has been up? Um, over on this side of the this side of the um listening dial, we we are always listening to a lot, a lot, a lot of different stuff. Um some 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 really, 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 really interesting things that we like to listen to. Let's 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 dig in here and see what we got. Oh boy, Slayer. We're always listening to Slayer up here. Um, again, um, been digging into that Seasons of the Abyss album, and I think uh, it's definitely one that you should go back and listen to if it's been a little bit. Um, what you were just hearing right there was Blood Red. Um, great, 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 great track. I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of this album. I'm a big fan of just... Um, you know, everything from Spirit in Black to Hollowed Point to Born of Fire. Um, of course, the kickoff track, War Ensemble, is is always, you know, really, 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 really great. Um, but we can't get enough of talking about, you know, Slayer here at the old uh, at the old hookup on music. Um, through the holidays, you know, trying to get through, trying to trying to get yourself into this 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 kind of rock and routine. To make it to the other side, uh, Slayer was a big, big help for us down over here. Oh, Slayer is always a big help. Um, you know, and I always talk about it. it's a new year. Maybe, you know, I know Kerry King's got a got a new solo album coming out, so we're definitely gonna get a little taste of something Slayer-ish. Um, can't wait to see what that is. But uh, always like listening to Slayer. It's a, it's a, it's a really, 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 really good time. Um, you know, let's let's dig into what else have I been listening to. Um, you know, there's there's there, there's always different, 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 different stuff to be to be, be had. What, 
Well, let's just jump right into what we're here for tonight. We are here tonight to talk a little bit about um, a little band called The Clash. And they're a very, very, very awesome album, London Calling. Um, we're going to go a little bit deeper tonight, a little bit of a track-by-track track basis. We're going to plan on doing this a little bit more as we go along, just kind of uh, digging more deeper into albums because, well, that's what we love to do. Um, we like to take wide turns, too, you know? We like to talk about Slayer and then talk about something like The Clash. You know, you may catch us talking about something like the Isley Brothers and then sneaking in something like, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, Bob Marley. You know, it's reggae to funk is, is an easier thing. Or you can go from Bob Marley to Black Sabbath, you know, a couple B bands. Um, you know, that's that's what we're always going to be doing here um, down at the hookup. But uh, London Calling, okay, another great, great seminal album that I think um, definitely you need to uh, dig deeper in. And what we're going to talk about tonight a little bit is, well, we're going to talk a little bit about well, just a lot of cool things about it, you know, because I decided that, well, since we are having a new year, we should just start off with something that is extremely awesome, like the London Calling album, okay, which was released in 1979. Wow, man, time flies, you know, three years before Moi was born, this is coming out in um, the United Kingdom, and then January of 80 is released in the United States. Wow, I can only imagine being, well, somebody who is given this copy of this album and sitting down for the very first time. A lot of people like to think of it as more of just a, a punk album because it, it, it includes lots and 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 lots of different, different sounds, um, a lot of different soundscapes. Um, we've, we've talked about different songs on this 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 album throughout time here um but we're gonna we're gonna focus a little bit on the second half of the album is is the goal um also while praising that first half because the first half is just great but i think the first half is where a lot of people i think know a little bit more about the band and well where they where they were um you know where they're from or where they were coming from they have a lot a lot a lot of good tunes All right, that right there, Train in Vain, a hidden track on the album. You're saying a hidden track? I've heard that song quite a lot. How's that song? A, a hidden track, but it was. Um, it was um, kind of just kind of was, well, the real reason was is because the, it was added to the, the album in the last minute. Okay, it was like they were done. Um, the cover was printed, everything, and they're like, one more song, one more song. We got to fit this song on there. And, um, you know, really, it was supposed to be called Stand By Me, but they didn't want it in confusion with the Benny King song, you know? You know, you don't want to be in confusion with Benny King in any way, shape, or form because, well, Benny King is awesome, also, just like The Clash. But uh, The Clash, you know, they said, you know what? Um, we're going to just, we're going to, we're going to go for it. We're going to add this song at a last, at a last minute, which I'm glad that they did because honestly, it was kind of one of the first songs that I heard. And it's, it's a little bit of a catchier song that it's going to be not, you know, it's going to be one that's going to bring you into the album a little bit more. And I think that's always been a problem with some people is that, well, we, something that sounds a little bit, something that could be on the radio. Some could be problematic to some, but honestly, to others. It could, it could grab them, bring them in, and learn about more about what this band was looking to do. Um, you know, it was, a, I guess this is from uh, Bill Price, okay? Um, Bill Price um, stated, okay, that uh, it was a Saturday afternoon when Mick Jones invited to hear the finished album. Um, he saw him in the vocal booth laying down vocals for a new song. Um, by Monday, it was finished. Um, it was going to be a giveaway song. Um, but actually, it became the final track of London Calling. Too late, however, to be included in the artwork. So again, this is kind of um, why it was um, stated that it was included there in the last in the last minute. Um, you know, the title of the song also cannot be found in the lyrics. Um, the explanation, again, by Mick Jones, who wrote the song, was like 
he described it as a train rhythm. Um, it was it was a feeling of it was a feeling of being lost. Um, again, I, I, it makes me feel um, makes me feel like uh, well, I know when the song goes, "Would you stand by me?" No, not at all. You know, and, and, and I guess I guess it's not originally supposed to be I guess a, a positive song, but to me, it feels pretty positive. Um, you know, other songs on side three, okay, to get started are you know, "Wrong and Boys," "Death or Glory," "Coca Cola." The card sheet, okay, and then side four, if you're looking at the album, is Lover's Rock, Four Horsemen, I'm Not Down, Revolution Rock, and Train in Vain. Um, again, that second, second, second side of that album is, is definitely somewhere where you're going to want to look into. Wow. Well, actually, you know what I say? You don't want to just look into the second side of the album. You want to listen to the whole entire album from the front to the back because you know what? It is worth all of that and your time to do that because if you're not doing that f- for lots of albums, you know what are what are we really what are we really doing here? What are they worrying about today? People worry. Violent Femmes. You know we're gonna get back to the class here in a second, but uh, we're gonna start going a little bit. You know, we're talking about one thing. Maybe, maybe a thought comes across my mind. Um, the violent femmes, violent femmes, the violent femmes have been on my mind <clears throat> for a lot for <clears throat> for quite a few uh, weeks now. Because number one, they're different, okay, and that's why they've been in my mind because the violent femmes are different. But that debut album, if you have not sat down and listened to that debut album, I would say go and do that. Go listen to that debut album and come back and let me know. It's a self-titled debut album from 1983, okay? Um, really, 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 really cool. Um, we've we've talked about it before on the show, okay? But uh, it just keeps sticking. It keeps sticking, it keeps sticking, it keeps sticking. Um, you know, just along with The Clash. You know, The Clash will always just keep sticking with us here, okay? Um, the best is when you come out with, the album and then you come up with a single maybe a single and it's called london calling and then you got like really cool side songs on it you know armageddon time gideon time was a really awesome side single that was um the flip side to london calling really really good stuff the album cover okay the album cover elvis presley okay you wouldn't think they would borrow from Elvis, um, but not really borrow. It's their own thing. They just kind of took the colored scheme. Um, and they also broke a guitar right there on the front cover, which I think a bass guitar, actually, which we're going to get to in a minute. But <laughs> I knew it's a bass guitar, and I'm going to get to it in a minute. But that being said, um, <clears throat> just using that cover and using the um, – What's the word I'm looking for? Using, uh, you know, trying to pay homage, you know, to that self-titled debut by Elvis. Okay. Using the pink letters down on the left side with the green text across the bottom. You know, if you weren't or didn't know Elvis and then knew this first, but then went back and listened to Elvis, I think that would be really, really cool. Because track number two on the album, um, Brand New Cadillac. I'm a big, big fan of this song. Um, it really, 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 really sounds like, like, uh, uh, you know, it sounds like, you know, where Back to Violent Femmes are a little bit of rockabilly. This song definitely has that that rockabilly um, feel, um, you know, and I guess uh, they cited the song, The Clash is one of the first rock and roll records and it initially used it as a warm-up song before recording. So uh, they decided to take this warm-up song in which they would, well, warm up with and be like, well, you know what? We're going to, well, you know, we're going to put this right on the record so that you can enjoy it, which is, I think, what I liked about The Clash and what I liked about the album is just all of the different uh, work and all the different pieces that went into putting this together, okay? Because you're also telling yourself a punk band, you know, coming out with a, a double album. You know, this could have been, this could have marked disaster for the band. Um, but again, it also showed that a band could be big, loud, you know, beautiful, 
in a collection of songs about anger and, you know, restlessness and a lot of other different things that just kind of drew people in. Um, it, it, it's kind of crazy because a lot of people, they've almost like at this point embraced some, some anti-commercialism things, but made it their own, which wasn't very commercial, <clears throat> which I think is honestly one of the uh, great parts of the band. You know, you, you say to yourself, you know, a band that is clicking on, on all, all cylinders is, is definitely a, a, a good band. You know, just sitting down and listening to this again for the show, I've listened to this album so many times, but it's like a movie. <clears throat> you hear so many different things and you don't really think that they're going to come out of kind of out of nowhere. And that's what happens here. They kind of come across your turntables and they, they color them. That's what the Clash do. Okay, and, and, you know, the players, you know, we've talked about them many, 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 many times, but Topper Heaton, the drummer, okay, in this album, he starts to come into his own, and I think really kind of where the band kind of knew that they can take this and run with it. They didn't just have a, 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 a typical punk drummer that just, a do, 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 do. they actually had somebody who can really kind of, you know, you know, push them to, to, to different, um, you know, different kind of, uh, you know, push them into doing different things with their skills. Okay. Um, you know, they could perform music in a wide variety of genres all of a sudden, um, beyond just punk while still adding on that punk music. Um, they were extremely disciplined while, um, you know, while they were recording this album, um, by the late afternoon though, they would always have a social football game. Um, not American football, of course. It's uh, soccer because, of course, this is where they are. Where this is the land of soccer. So I would say that definitely that would have been a lot of fun recording all day, going outside. Um, then they would go down to the pub, um, and then they would have a second rehearsal in the evening. So they would they would go and they would rehearse, have a little bit of fun, more rehearse. And I think that's kind of what our motto is going into this new year. It's kind of like, just like this album is recorded, we're going to rehearse, we're going to have some fun, and then we're going to play some more. Play, rehearse, play, rehearse, play, rehearse. That's that's where I think uh, most bands should, should find their, um, you know, you know, finding into their, uh, what, what they really want to do. Because you know what it is? It's always the word. It's a word, a word, a bird, bird, bird. Because I say it's the word. It is the bird. And it is the word. And you know, I'm shocked they didn't cover that song. They would have been an awesome cover on the London Calling album. A little bird is the word. But again, you know, a band, a band turning and tuning into different, different things. Um, I really just think that they were, 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 were just, just, just lots of different songs. Okay. The Guns of Britain was the first, uh, by the bassist, Paul Simonon and, um, you know, he he was doubtful of his lyrics at first, uh, but the song itself is about a paranoid outlook on life. Um, but they kept working on it and working on it, and I think that's their thing. You know, on this album, they worked and they worked and they worked and they worked, okay? On that second half of the album, okay, you know the first half, Rudy Can't Fail, but the second half, okay, you know, the work that you can just tell that was put into Revolution Rock, it is definitely, definitely, definitely awesome. Um, I just think they, 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 they were, were really, 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 really thinking that Revolution Rock was going to be the last track on the album, and then they kind of just threw in uh, "Train in Vain" was added in the last minute. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a good, it's a good reggae song. Um, it's a good. Um, I think it's a good way to have possibly ended the album even though that's not how the album ended but uh sometimes when things materialize like that where where it's supposed to end but then it doesn't it gets stronger that's where i think sometimes we find some of our our, our greatest uh influence in, in 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 rock you know that bass on that front cover busted up okay it, it's it's cool that uh you know, it's cool with, with rock in general or music in general or whatever music genre is when you can get some of these artifacts and save it. You know, and I think definitely getting that bass 
and, and putting that aside is definitely um really 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 awesome you know and and just you know and back to paul though uh he said he smashed it though out of frustration um that the when he learned the bounces of the concert were not allow the audience members to stand up out of their seats Ooh, i would say that that's a good enough reason to smash your bass if you're the clash especially during that time period that's pretty punk okay i might be a little bit wrong but i think that doing something like that is 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 really 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 crazy um and cool crazy cool um because you what i think was crazy wasn't the smashing of the bass was that um right then the picture is um snapped by penny smith okay um penny smith an english photographer right there right at the right moment um you know she's she is uh photographed everyone from led zeppelin to primal scream to oasis to the strokes but i think you know that front cover that one is etched into people's minds just because you know you're saying to yourself you got the clash you got that that that, that iconic that moment right there Sorry, had to play some more Slayer for you. But uh, again, why, what, what are we doing but playing Slayer, listening to Clash, just jamming out, talking with you guys, because that's what you are. You guys are friends. You know, we're musical compadres here. You know, and coming up, there's lots of stuff. We got a lot of, a lot of music coming up, okay? Coming up within the next week, we're going to be going through some of our favorites of 2023. We're going to get some guests. We're gonna talk. We're gonna we're gonna chop it up, um, because we're always curious out there to see what what is being listened to, you know, in the you know in the other in the other in the up in what you are listening to in the upcoming months because we got a lot of stuff coming up in the musical uh, album list. We got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of goodies. Okay, a lot of goodies, and it's curious to see just you know Green Day is gonna have a new album coming out. Okay, they got a new one coming out here in January. Okay, Saviors is going to be the name of that. It's going to be interesting to hear how that sounds. They've stirred up some controversy, mixing up some lyrics this past uh, weekend, which good for them. They're punk, punk it up, mix up some lyrics, upset some people. That's what music sometimes is for. It's to to bring up those emotions, not just the positive ones, but sometimes the not so positive ones. Um, don't 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 always want to get stuck on that oh whatever music happened. no sometimes music is made you know because we're upset you know it's made because we need the word <laughs> we need lots and lots of different things going into 2024 to just keep keep rock and roll but green day's got a new album out though so we're gonna have to look out for that um you know if you're in it if you're into just, just lots and lots of different stuff, you know. Um, anything from Idols has got a new album coming out. That's going to be hitting up in, in February, in the middle of February. Okay, um, Kid Cootie's got a Cuddy Cootie. We've been debating this back and forth. Is it Cuddy? Is it Cootie? Is it Cuddy? Is it Cootie? Who really knows? Um, I think it's Cuddy though. MGMT is back with another new album called Loss of Life, Mother Nature. If you haven't heard this new track yet totally different for them um real estate who we talked about last year uh last year like it was like a long time ago last episode um daniel's the new album coming out with um from them you know and that that song uh, water underground it's it's really sticking 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 in my head bruce dickinson from iron maiden is going to have a new album coming out um uh, baptized by fire in march curious to hear what that's going to be like along with ministry on march 1st Hopium for the masses. We saw them live. We talked about that. They're loud, and we like loud. We also like soft. We like a whole lot of different things. Um, but overall, what we like is just sharing with you all of this, this just, just awesomeness. Okay. Okay, because I could pause right there and just keep saying awesomeness, 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 awesomeness. But I won't. I won't just, I won't, I won't, I won't do that. Uh, what I will do though is say that uh, everyone from Dragon Force has got a new album. Cheryl Crow's got a new album. Some 41's got a new album coming out. You know, anyone else that you know have got a new album coming out? We're going to be talk, talking about it here as the new year 
progresses. We've got a lot of people going to be bringing us a lot of information, a lot of new albums, a lot of concerts to be seen, um, you know, but, uh, b- you know, I-, I think back to one time I went to a New Year's Eve concert. It was, uh, it was one, it was in actually in Los Angeles, California, when me and some friends went down there to visit and it was a DJ. I went and saw a DJ. It was, it wasn't any name DJ. It was just a club with a DJ. And what I realized is that uh, these New Year's Eve concerts become huge spectacles, even if it's somebody that maybe you've never even heard of. Okay, Fish, they just put out a whole New Year's Eve spectacle and everyone's talking about this. They 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 went through and, and they brought something back that it's 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 called Game Henge. Okay, I'm not really super familiar with this, but after reading into a little bit of this, it was it was a paper that Trey from Fish had created uh, back in college and came up with his own like story and everything. And it's super 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 rare for the band to play it, and they hadn't played this since since '94, and they decided, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to bust into this. And well, that's what they did. And people are just talking about this. It's, it's, uh, it's all over. I don't even know quite, quite, quite a lot about really what is being said about it because I'm not familiar, but check out some of these uh, online things. I got flying birds, you got guys in green suits dancing on stage. Don't know too much about it. If you know more and would like to tune me in, um, Seemed like it could have been fun being there in the front row. Um, going back through the past years, there seems to have been lots of awesome shows on, on New Year's Eve. You know, of course, the Grateful Dead have played a couple New Year's Eve shows that we all would have loved to have been at, you know, especially in that late 70s. You know, the closing of Winterland. I have the the DVD around here somewhere. Really, really, really kind of what got me started on just their awesomeness. A three disc, three DVD set just what I liked about it was that the Blues Brothers opened up uh, this concert. Man, I would have died to see the Blues Brothers opening up for the Grateful Dead. And then imagining Belushi and everyone hanging out after the show. Just just amazing. Okay, just, just amazing. Um, just amazing, again, sharing with you all of these things. It's great to be back here for a whole brand new year. Um, like I stated before... Here down at the Sadistic Penguin Studios, our main goal is just to share with you awesome things, no matter if it's music, movies, drafts, whatever it may be that we are we are doing. See right here, my main man here, um, Magnificent Stan, he's got his own show right here uh, called It's Getting Drafty in here. This shirt's very nice, by the way. Um, but uh, I really, 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 really want everyone out there just to, just to enjoy yourself, okay? Nobody's doing anything to, we're, we're, to, 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 oh, I don't know this, I know more of this. Some people would say, oh, you didn't even say this a lot today. You know, you, you, you missed out on this on the class, or you missed out on that on the class. You know, I know I've missed out on stuff. That's the thing is about this show is that we hopefully it never ends. And we could hopefully, by the time it's all finished, we could go ahead and fill in all of the blanks. Okay. We could fill in all of the new little stuff that we, we missed out that we did. Okay my one of my favorite songs from the clashes london calling is lost in the supermarket okay um you while researching for this you know you're you're sometimes you're like oh this is about being lost in a supermarket no the song's about a little bit more it's about you know joe strummer growing up in a basement with his mother and grandmother um that's his childhood um, we all grow up and we all have to experience different things and how we handle it and how we share it is definitely what makes some of the most awesome music that we have here together. Um, we're going to continue to do that. Um, we're going to continue to share all the awesome stuff on the sadistic penguin studios, uh, com, the writing, the awesome, the awesome YouTube, everything, everything out there, but more importantly, it's you. It's you, the people who just love to listen, like to talk about music, and just like, well, spending time with each other. So thank you. Thank you so much. Hopefully, I will be out there, and we will see each other soon. Um, Next week, next Wednesday, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to do a live show. Check out for that. 
Um, we will be posting and this and that and everywhere where you can find us in that posting degree, or you can reach out if you'd like to be on the show talking about your favorite releases of 2023. Um, whatever it may be, you will see us again because it is a brand new year and we're here to rock with you. My name is Tony. Okay. Um, I can't say it enough how thankful I am just to be able to do this and, and share this time with you. Share the word. Because it's always the word, my folks, my friends, my people. My name is Tony, and we will see you again next time.